So um, thank you for having me, Miranda. I'm so excited to be here. Um, my name is P. Sunpan. I'm the Dog Seatbelt Lady at Dogs Ride Certified. I get dogs buckled up in certified seatbelts so they can be safe in case of a car crash. And today we're going to talk about summer trips with your dog. So um, not only buckling up in the car and being safe in the car, but the other considerations to take into account with all that summer heat added up on top. Okay, so um, just to go ahead and get started. I was wondering, where are you and your he your dog headed this summer? Are you planning any any trips or anything? I think you could, it's just you, Kathy, if you want to tell us. Um, we'll probably take him to Oklahoma City to visit family. Oh, cool. Cool. Well, I hope you have a great trip. And for anyone else watching the um, the webinar later. Hopefully, after you leave this, you'll and you'll have some really good skills to keep your dog safe in the car and have a really successful trip. So, um, we'll just jump right on in. A little bit about me. This is my dog Piper. She was my very best friend in the world, um, and you know we were always in the car together. We would go on like long hikes and explore new towns. The best thing we ever did was go down the coast of North Carolina and we literally just like drove down a little bit further every day and like beach hopped. It was amazing. And we had the best time together. Um, this is just her, but then this happened and a teenager lost control of his car. He slammed right into us and Piper was never buckled up in the car. Um, and I learned really quickly that day that the seatbelt saved my life, but my dog, my very best friend in the world, didn't have anything to protect her at all. I um, never even thought about buckling her up in the car. She was very happy to just hang out in the back seat with the windows down and like let the wind flow through. And I was like, okay, she's happy, everything's fine. But it really wasn't. Um, she was thrown into the back of my seat. She broke her back and was paralyzed. And I had to say goodbye to her that night. Um, so I started researching seatbelts for dogs like crazy and I came across the Center for Pet Safety and I learned that only five brands now, well, four brands at the time, now five, um, brands of dog car safety restraints have actually passed the crash testing by Center for Pet Safety. So they've got this whole certification program. It's, um, it's super top notch, but only five brands have passed. And there's hundreds and hundreds of brands in the market and those brands um, either fail the test or don't even qualify to be tested um, because they don't meet quality standards. So I was quite outraged <laughs> when I heard that. I was like, that's not okay. And pet parents need to know about this. So um, started up Piper's Walk. It's a dog event to spread awareness for dog seatbelt safety. Um, I don't want anybody else to go through what I went through with Piper. Um, and you know, just save a lot of heartbreak and save dog lives. So um, Piper's Walk was created. It was held in Olney, Maryland. Um, and we just, we w did like a big walk um, in her memory, had Center for Pet Safety come out. Uh, we do like a dog seatbelt clinic and to get dogs buckled up at the event. And um, the last couple of years has been virtual because of COVID, but hopefully next year we can be back in person. Um, but we've got Piper's Walk coming up in a couple of weeks as well. But that's kind of how we got to where I am now. And now I um, work on getting dogs buckled up into those certified seatbelts. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit about seatbelt safety and dive into what those five brands are um, and how to use them. So before we do that though, I wanna show you this video. This is the PetSmart top paw harness. And so with Piper's Walk, we raise some funds to do some crash testing with Center for Pet Safety. And this is one of the ones that we tested. We tested PetSmart top paw, and this is how it fared. I want to pause it real quick because this does say 
that it's been crash tested according to leading industry standards and there are no industry standards. Um, they don't, products don't need to pass a certain um, threshold before it hits the market and enters your home. So as you can see, the um, harness didn't do anything to protect the dog at all. The packaging said that it was crash tested. And the big take takeaway is that crash tested doesn't mean that it actually passed crash testing. Um, you gotta be really, really careful. There's lots of products out there that say crash tested. Um, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, what about this brand? What about that brand? It says crash tested. And it just doesn't mean that it passed. Uh, the other thing that you need to know is that extension tethers, they increase the risk for injury. So this is a, this is an, is an example of an extension tether. Um, it is something that clips to, from the dog's harness um, to the seatbelt buckle. So you just clip it in and you find this product either um, alone like this or uh, with a product that has a harness attachment to. They're really dangerous and Center for Pet Safety has an advisory out against them. And I'm gonna read this to you exactly the way that they outline it because I think it's super powerful the way it is. It says that pets are essentially clotheslined by extension tethers. They launch forward and snap back with the spine incurring the most damage. Reports of paralysis, blunt force trauma, and in some cases, the spine has been damaged so severely that the internal organs could no longer function and the dog had to be humanely euthanized. Piper was not buckled up and she had the same kind of injuries. She was paralyzed. She had blunt force trauma to her spine and it was damaged so severely she had to be humanely euthanized. And so to have a product like this on the market that has the potential to cause the same injuries as a dog that's not even buckled up at all is, is not okay. And it uh, puts our dogs at so much risk, you know? Um, and so, just be very mindful that if you have an extension tether that um, your dog is gonna be at risk for these injuries in case there's a crash. Um, so to kind of show you a little bit better, here's a quick little um, view of what happens with an extension tether. So if the tether does not break, you've got all of this pressure right here, pulling the dog back from the spine. And as you can see, the dog isn't protected on that seat at all. It's just propelled forward. So that's if a tether doesn't break. Um, and then people always ask me to um, about the length of the tether. No matter if it's short or long, you're still putting pressure on that spine if there's a crash. Um, and also in a crash product stretch. Um, so that's why you see you see the dog being extended so far off of the um, 
off of the seat. And then this other one, their Kurgo Auto Zip Line. Oops. Oh no. Here we go. Um, in the Kurgo Auto Zip Line, you have uh, this piece at the top. Right here is like literally a zip line across the top of your car. And then your dog is carabinered to the zip line. So there's that tether piece. And this is what happened. That's an example of what happens if a tether does break. It's crazy hard to watch and the dogs are just, they become projectiles, you know, and it's not, it's not only a danger for the dog, but for the passengers as well. So that's why I really advise against those extension tethers. Um, and what we should use instead are the sleepy pods. So this is, this is the, the exciting stuff. This is what does work. This is how a seatbelt um, should be for your dog. Uh, we have the Sleepy Pod Click It Terrain and the Sleepy Pod Click It Sport. They're the only harnesses to have passed the crash testing by Center for Pet Safety, like the only ones. Um, and so they're good for dogs up to uh, 90 pounds for the sport and 110 pounds for the terrain that just came out in the last um, year. So super excited about that. And I've got these over here to show you. Maybe I'll stop share for a minute so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so this one is the Sleepy Pod Sport. It's just like a your nice lightweight um, everyday seatbelt harness. Um, it works as a walking harness as well, which is really nice. So you can hop in, in and out of the car easily. Um, and then I'll show you how it works to buckle up your dog in a moment, but that's the Sport. And then the terrain, the terrain is really neat. It's, um, it's more heavy duty. Um, it's got your clips at the top so you can walk your dog with it as well. Um, but you also have, and mine's old, so I don't have the patches, but there's this Velcro piece here, if you can see. Um, and you can put on here um, like dog in training, service dog, whatever you need it to say, there's a patch that goes here. And you can also add a backpack attachment. So if you want your dog to carry your things for you, then you can do that as well. So the terrain is nice. It's more, it's just more heavy duty. And this, the sport is like your lightweight um, harness. So I will go back and share screen so you can see what else. Um, buckling up is a snap. So this is um, how to buckle up your dog in the car um, with the, the sport and the terrain harnesses. Um, this is an acronym. Um, S is slide the seatbelt through. So you're taking the human seatbelt and you're gonna go right through the harness there, not under the legs, okay? Because so your dog doesn't get tangled up in it. It always goes over the back. A is adjust the seatbelt and then P is push it in. Okay, so I've got a video to show you that will explain it much better. Let's see, here it is. So your dog has complete mobility when they're wearing this harness. They can sit up, lay down, turn left, turn right, um, but they just can't make a full circle. And so you can buckle up your dog from any position. This one just shows you buckling your dog from a sitting position facing forward like a human would. Right, guys. So buckling up your dog is a snap and I'm going to show you how to buckle up your dog when he's facing the front of the car. So S is slide the seatbelt through. Take the seatbelt, slide it through the loops. If you have a um, sleepy pod terrain, it's the same kind of concept. Um, you just put it through, through the harness itself. So slide the seatbelt through. N is not under the legs. We always go over the back. A is adjust. So I'm pulling the seatbelt out little by little. Remember, you don't want the seatbelt to lock up or otherwise your dog won't be able to move. And then P is push it in. Just a little bit more. And that's it. You wanna to check to make sure that you still got room to move there. And 
That's it. You're good to go. Good boy. Go. So that's how you would buckle up your dog in the car. Again, you can buckle up your dog from any position. And to give you an idea of the difference in how the seatbelt works, um, this is the Center for Pet Safety's website. You can watch all of their crash test videos on here and all the Center, Center for Pet Safety certified products are here. Um, but this is the Sleepy Pod Sport. Um, and this is, how, this is how it does. I don't think I can make it full screen for you, but. Here we go. So you can see that the dog stays on the seat. All the impact of the crash is distributed throughout that, um, that chest um, plate right there. And the dog's body is still moving. You have to remember that it is a car crash, so your dog is going to move, but you can see the drastic difference in um, the dog staying on the seat and that protection that that harness gives. Okay. So just a reminder that puppies need to be buckled up as well. Accidents can happen anytime, whether they're a puppy or a grown up dog. And also as a puppy, this is the time to teach them how to ride in the car. You don't want your dog to um, grow up learning unwanted car habits and then um, months later or a year later, you're like, well, actually, let me let me teach you how I really want you to ride in the car. And it's going to be even harder to break that habit. So I really recommend that puppies start buckled up from the very beginning. All right. And so that's that's the the sleepy pod harnesses. Um, most dogs end up in a sleepy pod harness just because it's so versatile. Um, they're lightweight. They work in almost any car in any car. Um, and they're good for such a wide range of, um, of dogs from 17 pounds up to 90 pounds, uh, 90 pounds or 110 pounds, depending on which one you've got. Uh, but if you have a small dog, um, these are the Sleepy Pod carriers. The Sleepy Pod Adam, it goes up to 12 pounds. The Mini and Mobile are the same thing, but different sizes. Mini's up to seven pounds and Mobile's up to 15. And then the Sleepy Pod Air is up to 17 pounds. So, they're just different styles depending on what your dog, um, what your dog likes, how your dog likes to lay down, and the weight of your dog. But the thing that's really neat about the Sleepy Pod carriers, I'll show you. I'll show you the mobile here. So um, it's got a serious structural integrity to them. Can you push. Let me see. Can you push down on this? it's not budging, like it doesn't collapse into itself, you know? And there's a lot of carriers out there that they will just just collapse into itself if there's a crash. Um, and inside, um, I don't know if you can see that very well, but there's this like crazy soft bedding in here. And the Sleepy Pod carriers, they're made to double as a pet bed. So when you're traveling, you don't need to carry a bed and a, um, and a carrier for the car, it's all in one. And it really is like crazy soft. If they made a blanket like that for humans, I totally buy one. Um, it's really nice in there. So you just make the carrier as comfy as you can for your dog and they should love it. But that's, that's a sleepy pod carriers. Like they just, there's so much structural integrity to them. You know, if you push down on it, it's amazing. Um, I had a client who, reached out to me because he had a carrier that was not certified and um, it was it was crash tested, supposed to keep the dog safe. He slammed on the brakes and um, the dog went flying out of the carrier. And that was just a sudden stop, not a crash. And so he decided to come and uh, get something certified for his dog for that peace of mind. So it really does make a huge difference. These are just some other styles. Um, the Away Pet Carrier is another one that's come out in the last year or two. Um, so this is another style of carrier. Zugo Pet Rocketeer Pack. So a lot of people tell me, hey, I want my dog to be able to see out the window. And this is an option. Um, it's a car seat. It's a car seat for your dog. The person who created this, her dog had mobility issues and couldn't lay down for an extended amount of time. So she created this car seat for the dog to sit in. Um, and you can also 
wear your dog on your, on your body and carry your dog that way. So it's kind of, it's kind of nice for um, being able to take your dog places, things like that. All right, if you would like to go the kennel route, Gunner Kennel is top notch. Um, this thing is indestructible. The person who made this threw it off a cliff, ran over it with a truck, um, shot at it, did a crush test and got it certified by Center for Pet Safety. So he has safety um, at the top of his mind. It's for up to 75 pounds only. Um, the large is not certified, okay? So if you do have a big dog and you wanna go the kennel route, then you should go with Lucky Kennels. It's the only kennel to be certified up to 110 pounds. And that certification just came out a couple months ago. So yay, Lucky Kennels, super excited about that. Um, we're in the beginning stages of dog seatbelt safety right now, you know? Um, and so little by little, we're getting, we're getting more progress as time goes on. So celebrating those, those little steps as we go. Okay, so the thing that you've got to keep in mind is you got to get your seatbelt early. Okay, so if you're um, planning a trip, don't get the seatbelt the week before. I like to recommend two weeks to a month um, early to give your dog time to get used to it. Okay, um, if you've got the harness, then wear the harness around the house first and then wear it out for a walk. Um, buckle up and then just stay in the driveway and you're treating this whole time and creating really positive experiences. Um, and then buckle up and go for short rides and then go for longer rides. So you're going maybe down the driveway and back or down the block and back and build up to being able to go for longer place, um, longer drives into different places, okay? Um, and then for the kennels and carriers, you just treat it like crate training. So um, lots of treats, lots of toys, um, make that carrier or crate a really, really fun place to be. And then here's just the list again of the CPS certified products. Um, remember, if it's not on this list, if it doesn't have the Center for Pet Safety logo on it, it did not pass crash testing, no matter what that packaging says, okay? And these are just some dogs who ride certified. That's what we call dogs who get buckled up in these certified seat belts. So we've got Zoomy over here in the Gunner Kennel. Um, Cece's in her Sleepy Pod mobile. And here's uh, Bowie in her pod sport. Okay, so I'm going to stop there for a minute. Uh, do you have any questions about seatbelts for dogs before we talk about um, preparing for an actual trip? We have a uh, joyride harness. Okay. Um, my daughter's just going to get it to show you. Um, I, I don't know if there's any way to use the seatbelt with this. Um, or do you have any experience with this product or? Um, so are, is, that a, is that made to be a seatbelt? Is that what you're asking? I don't, I don't know. Um, it was given to us. So I don't, I didn't never saw any packaging on it, but we okay. use it for him on walks when, um, and this is what we buckle the seatbelt um, tether to, which is what we have right now, but I will probably We're going to change it. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah. So, I mean, you already know about the tether and the danger there, but there's unfortunately not a way to use the human seatbelt with that particular harness because of the different uh, materials used for that harness versus the sleepy pod harness. Um, there's a certain amount of um, leeway that a product is allowed to stretch um, in the crash. And so like they test every single detail there. Um, we don't know like with the joyride harness, how, um, how it would fare with the, those forces of the crash if it would stay intact or not. Um, like you saw with the pet smart harness. So unfortunately, unfortunately, no, there's no way to use that one with the with the car. I'm sorry. Okay. That's yeah. fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing. Like there's just so many products out there, and unfortunately, there's only one harness <laughs> that that really works. Um, so hopefully one day we'll have more options, you know. 
and it'll be easier to get them because this stuff we I never see them in the stores. I don't know. Have you ever seen Sleepy Pod in the stores around you? Yeah. Oh, we've only had our dog for about a month, so oh. um, still getting used to shopping for dog products. Oh, cool. Well, congratulations on your new dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All righty. Well, hopefully your puppy will be safe in the car on your trip. And when you're preparing for your trip, here's some things to think about. So first thing is where you're going. Um, Bring Fido is a great resource. If you haven't heard about them, they have a whole list of uh, like dog friendly places and activities in the area, hotels, um, restaurants, everything. Like it's a super resource. So bringfido.com, I would um, go there to kind of check things out. And then when you're thinking about lodging, there's so many different ways you can travel now. Like you could stay in a hotel, you could stay in an Airbnb, you could go camping and you really want to keep your, do your dog's um, preferences in mind. So like if you, um, if you've got a shy dog or a reactive dog, maybe a hotel isn't quite the place to be because the hotel's got lots of noises, lots of people, um, the elevator, if your dog can handle the elevator or not. So you want to think about, can your dog handle that hotel environment? Um, and if not, then maybe an Airbnb is a nice option. If you're lucky, you can find a place with a house and a backyard um, and give your dog that privacy that, um, that your dog might need. Um, or you could go camping. And if you go camping, you also wanna think about, can your dog handle the, the sounds, the nature sounds, all the critters around and stuff like that? Can your dog settle? Cause you wanna make sure that you've got um, a nice stress-free trip, right? And so some things to consider there. And then before you book the place, ask about the space, ask about where can you walk your dog? Um, is there a sidewalk? Is it on a busy street? Um, just, you wanna just take everything into consideration. Uh, you, in the summer, you know, it's going to be really, really hot. So you want to think about what dog friendly activities does this destination offer and at what time. So whether you're going to the beach or going hiking or going to a city, it's going to be hot in the, in the afternoon, in most of the day. So what is there around? Like, is there um, a doggy pool? Is there um, like a Zoom room? It's like a like an indoor dog gym. It's in various states, not everywhere. So we want to check that out. Um, do you can you go to can you find like a dog a really great doggy daycare where they give lots of breaks for the dogs to play indoors, or um, go to like a, a training center and see if you can take a class. Like see what's what's around because at the beach, uh, the sand's going to be super hot. You don't want to burn your your dog to burn their paws. Um, hiking during the day, like 3 p.m., that's going to be crazy, crazy hot. Um, dogs don't sweat, so it's going to be really important to keep your dog cool in the summer. Um, and then in a city, that pavement's going to get crazy hot, too. So you just want to have a backup indoor option. So being prepared, um, a pop-up travel crate um, is good if your dog is going to be alone um, for any period of time. Um, do not use that um, travel crate in the car because it's not certified, but it's a nice thing to have if you need to um, keep your dog in one space and one safe space while you run an errand or something. Um, if your dog is sensitive to sounds then a white noise machine is um, something you might want to travel with. Backup food, if you feed raw, <laughs> I made this mistake of bringing um, raw food in a cooler with me on a long trip. And I was like, sure, it'll be fine. It, it was a mess and it was not fine <laughs> and it spoiled. So um, get backup food, maybe like a freeze dried raw or something like that. Um, and then if your dog is special considerations, so like if your dog is still in training, if your dog is a service dog um, or just needs space, then um, the patch on the terrain is really nice because you can change it out to say whatever you need to say. And I also have um, a leash patch. So I put this on my leash and it says training. My dog is always constantly <laughs> in training so that people know essentially. All right. Extra things to consider. You might want to bring food dispensing toys with you, regular toys, treat and, treats and shoes. So basically 
things to keep your dog busy. A busy dog is a good dog. And um, you wanna make sure that your dog just always has something to do. Okay, uh, extra towels. The soggy doggy towel is amazing. This is the most absorbent thing I have ever used in my life. <laughs> so I would highly recommend it. Uh, different leashes. I use different leashes for different, um, different kinds of outings. So um, if I'm gonna be walking like in a city and like there's gonna be streets to, to cross, then I have a leash that has a traffic handle on it. Um, if we're hiking, um, I have a mountain dog leash um, that has some more um, strength to it. And it also has like double clips. So if I'm gonna be walking on a narrow path or in a busy area, then I can have that double clip, one for the front and one for the back hook of her harness. So I have a little bit more control and she's a little bit closer to me. So different kinds of leashes. Um, there is doggy sunblock. Dogs uh, with short white fur burn more easily. Um, just something to keep in mind. Uh, bug spray, poop bags, water, you know, the basics there. But the bug spray is going to be really important, especially in the summer with the ticks and everything too. Um, if you're going to the beach, a life jacket is important. Uh, this is this is Bowie. We saw her a little bit earlier, and her dad actually told me about how um, they live near a beach, and the lifeguards go on several dog saves around there, and they've lost quite a few dogs um, that way. So a life jacket is something I hadn't really thought about um, very much, but. I'm definitely gonna be bringing a life jacket for my, my new dog River right now because I don't want that to happen to her, you know? And an emergency tube and a go bag is important. So this is kind of cool. It fits on the gunner kennel, but you can put it anywhere. And inside you put your dog's emergency plan. Um, so if in case you're in a car crash or for any emergency, um, where does your dog go? Who do you call if you can't take care of your dog at that moment in time? Um, and it just kind of lists everything about what to do in case of emergency, you know, um, your dog's allergies and your dog's uh, special like uh, behavior protocols if there's any things that they need to know. Um, and then a go bag is just like my overnight bag for a dog. Uh, so a bag full of like food and like extra extra leashes and things that someone might need to take care of her while I can't. Um, a pet first aid kit, important to have. I keep it in my car. The one time that I did not have it with me, of course, my dog got bitten under the eye. <laughs> so I like to just always have it with me just in case. Uh, cooling vest. This is like part of, it's like my dog's second skin in the summer. Here's my cooling vest. Um, this is by Roughwear. Um, I think it's like the Roughwear Jet Stream. There's like two different ones, but you basically just wet it um, and then put it on your dog and it keeps your dog cool in the summer, um, helps them to, um, to really regulate their body temperature because uh, they, they pant to cool down. That's the only way they can cool down um, from the heat. Okay, um, and then a crate fan, even if you don't have a crate, you can put like a fan in the car um, to kind of help combat the, um, the heat a little bit. And we'll talk more about that later on when we talk about heat stroke. So just some extra things to consider there. And then when you get onto the road, um, try to pre-pack your car ahead of time. Make sure that everything has a place, including your dog. <laughs> the one time that I did not pre-pack my car, my dog didn't have a place to sit. And so, after rearranging everything, she had to sit in a different spot and it gave her such anxiety that, uh, and this was an eight hour trip. <laughs> so she was anxious and then I was stressed that she was anxious. Make sure your dog has a place to sit. And if your dog needs to sit in a different spot, you gotta practice it before the trip, okay? Um, give your dog something to do. Uh, you can put a chew inside of a quizzle. If you don't know what it is, you need to look it up and, and get one because it's one of the, like the best things I've ever bought. <laughs> um, you can put a bully stick in there and make it last a really long time. And it like, the dogs have a hard time getting it out so they don't swallow that nub at the end. It's a great product. Um, you can try frozen Kongs, a licky mat. I've seen licky mats that like suction cup to the window. So that's a nice way to train your dog to ride in the car as well and keep them calm to have a licky mat there. Um, you can scatter toys in the back seat. 
And I use a car hammock. Um, it'll keep everything in one place. So like when you're driving, the toys don't roll to the floor and your dog's trying to get things, um, like move their body over there. Um, a hammock will keep everything in place. And then just know your dog. Like if your dog can't handle having those toys in the back un unsupervised because you're going to be driving, um, then don't give it to him. And you'll just have to really train your dog um, to ride nicely in the car. But, you know, know your dog. Don't give your dog anything. Your dog will just destroy and gulp. Okay. And then when you're at your at the rest areas, try to stop at every rest area if you can, especially if you have an anxious car rider. Um, that's super important to help them just de-stress and calm their bodies and their minds. Um, I know it's hard to stop at every rest area, but stop as frequently as possible. I try to I try to stop between every hour and a half to two hours at the most. Um, and so yeah, and then if you're on the, on the road for multiple days, you might want to like stop at different towns and go on a hike on a trail or something to really get that energy out. Um, the There's an app called All Trails and that can help you find apps if you're going to different cities that you're not familiar with. Uh, try to take your time when you stop at these rest areas um, and make sure that when you open that car door um, that you've got that leash on your dog before you unbuckle. Um, so that's another reason why it's good to have your dog buckled up so that when you open the door, your dog's not just bombarding out, out the door. They're going to be really excited to get out of that car. So um, just kind of take your time there and let your dog fully relax and stretch out his legs. Um, there are signs that are dog friendly and not friendly of the rest areas. And there are some really nice rest areas on the, on the highways, like space, like really open green space. So you might wanna take a long leash with you and give your dog room to run around that way too. Um, offer your dog water and treats, of course, and just don't be alarmed if your dog doesn't take water and treats, especially if you have an anxious car rider because they're just, they're so wound up, they need time to like de-stress before they do take water and treats. This is my favorite. Find a quiet spot to play at that rest area. You can bring your treat pouch with you um, and play some training games. Nothing fancy. You can just do touch or um, practice a loose loose leash walk um, or something fun that your dog likes to do. You know, like it provides great mental stimulation for them, um, gives them movement, and gives them a positive association with the rest area. And my dog actually, I skipped a rest area one time, and she knew, and she whipped her head around at me, and was like, "You did not." stop. <laughs> so they do know. Um, and it, it's nice that if, we, if you make it a routine that, hey, we stop at the rest area and play, then it just builds more positive associations with the whole trip in general and riding in the car. This is something really fun, Sniff Spot. Um, it's, an, it's an app where you can rent like a private fenced in area for your dog to run. So again, like if you're on the road for multiple days, this is nice to find a spot for your dog to get out and play fetch and get that energy out before um, continuing on on the, on the drive. Okay. And then here's some special considerations if you're traveling alone. Um, I travel alone a lot. <laughs> I think it's great, but it's really, um, it's risky because there's nobody else to help take care of your dog. Um, and especially in the summer when it's hot, um, the car is going to get hot real fast. So you have to be aware of heat stroke. Um, here are the different signs of heat stroke in dogs. There's that rapid panting, weakness, bright red tongue, um, vomiting, and basically dogs pant to cool down, right? So you want to know what normal panting looks like for your dog. And then the second you see that panting change and your dog can't, um, can't calm himself um, and is just super restless, then you know that something, something's wrong and you've got to get your dog cool immediately. So you want to keep your dog cool internally and uh, manage the environment around him. Uh, and so we're going to talk about managing the environment around him. So when you're about to approach a rest area, you know because the signs are coming up, right? It's like two miles until the rest area. Crank that AC and get the car as cool as possible. Um, park in the shade um, and then also turn on those crate fans that we had talked about or just the 
battery operated travel fans if you've got some. Then you want to cool down your dog. So putting on that cooling vest and maybe you can give your dog a frozen treat. So like a frozen Kong or something like that. Uh, I travel with a cooler of like frozen dog food. <laughs> um, and then this whole time your car is still running. Okay. Um, only after your car is set and your dog is set, do I, do you turn off the, the engine, roll down the window a little bit for that ventilation and then take yourself to, to the bathroom or whatever, wherever it is, if you're at the rest area or like running in to, for an errand or something like that. Okay. It's important for you to go first because this is when the car is at the coolest. The second you leave, the car temperature is going to rise. The car acts like an oven. So um, on a cool day, um, this is something that I learned from a veterinarian um, a few weeks ago, and this has stuck with me ever since, that um, on the nice days, on like a 75 degree day, that's when heat stroke happens the most actually, because people think it's a nice day and my dog will be okay in the car, but it's actually not. Um, a, do a car can get up to 109 degrees in just 30 minutes on like a 75 degree day. And it doesn't need to be 109 degrees for your dog to have a heat stroke. So um, basically go fast and come back and keep the car as cool as possible. <laughs> Uh, if you need to go grocery shopping, uh, you gotta try to, and you wanna avoid leaving your dog in the car, you could try ordering online for pickup. If you've got like a giant that has like a pea pod and you can like drive up to get it, um, you can find a dog friendly farmer's market. Uh, not all farmer's markets are dog friendly. <laughs> I got kicked out of a farmer's market once because I did not know that. <laughs> so Piper and I got kicked out. Um, Anyways, you could try to bring groceries from home. That involves a lot of good planning. So if you're a good planner, try that. Or if you're lodging that accepts packages, you can try to pre-plan to get groceries sent to you. So um, I use Hungry Root or Imperfect Foods when I, oh, what happened? Um, when I travel with my dog. And so that's just an idea to help you out. And then also a busy dog's a good dog. Um, you can't have your dog with you 24 seven when you're traveling alone. Like you got to shower, <laughs> you got to unpack and back up the car. So give your dog lots of things to do to keep busy. This is um, a dog puzzle by Nina, Nina Otteson. And so uh, that's just something you can give your dog to do to keep mentally stimulated while you go and do the things that you need to do. And if your dog has separation anxiety, be sure to work on that before you start traveling together. Um, that will just make everything much more, much more peaceful. All right, and then some skills that you might wanna work on before um, having that vacation with your pup is leash walking, of course. Um, you want your dog to be able to be by your side when you're navigating crowds. Um, I just got back from Asheville with my dog and the sidewalks were packed, like everything, they're, everyone's outside now. So um, it's really important to be able to have your dog by your side. Uh, laying on a mat, if you're gonna go out to eat and bring your dog with you, if you've got your dog trained to the point where you lay out that mat and your dog comes running to lay down and like knows how to settle down into it, you've got the easiest restaurant outdoor dining experience ever. Calm greetings. You don't want your dog jumping up on other kids and knocking them over or just people who don't like dogs. I know it's crazy that that actually happens. <laughs> I'm like, how can you not like a dog? But uh, it's important to have a calm greeting there. Uh, come, come could save your dog's life. If you're at the beach and your dog's running after a seagull, you don't want your dog to get lost in beach land. You know, you want to make sure that your dog always comes back to you. And if your dog doesn't have an emergency recall word, that's something that, um, like it's a silly word that you teach your dog. And when you say that silly word or the word that you just don't use that often, then your dog's like, what? And then comes like running right back at you. So I like to have come and an emergency recall word um, when we go out. And then the last one is stay, just going along with that separation anxiety piece and being able to, um, to be alone and stay somewhere while you go and do other things. Okay, so just some skills that you might like to have when you're vacationing with your puppy. All right, I'm gonna stop there for a minute. That was a lot of information. Uh, are there any questions before we move on? 
I think I saw something in the chat. Let me check it out. Oh, Allison, I'm so happy that you are recommending the Click It Sport. Woohoo! That's awesome. Some places us get dog cars alone. That is true. Um, that's true. And so it's important to try not to not to leave your dog alone in the car as much as possible. This is like last resort. Um, no choice kind of thing, you know, but yeah, try not to leave your dog alone in the car. But, oh, I'm so happy to hear that you're recommending Click It Sport. That's fantastic. Okay. That makes my day. Yay. Okay. Summer precautions. And if you guys have any questions along the way, just put it in the chat and um, I will go back and look at it um, afterwards. Um, so here we go. Some of it is, is review and some of it is new stuff, but some reminders, those beaches really try to stick to early morning and the um, late evenings. That's when the sand is, um, that's when the sand is not as hot. That's when there's less people, less distractions. Your dog is more likely to come back to you during those times of day rather than when the beach is packed and full of dogs and people. So do try to be mindful of those, um, those beach times. You wanna watch those waves, make sure that your dog doesn't get too far into the ocean and get caught into the tide. Uh, so that's why it's really important to have that life jacket as well. Um, you could use a long line to allow your dog to run in and out of the waves. Um, Palomine lines, if you've not if not heard about it, is a really nice choice. They're easy to clean and it's a nice long line for your dog to, to run with. Now you wanna give your dog lots of breaks if you're at the beach. Um, some dogs will just keep going and going and going. And you know how when you run on that sand and move your like move your body there, like, it's a lot of work and you're sore the next day. And so for dogs, it's the same thing, except they don't know when to stop. So you don't want them to collapse. Make sure that your dog takes lots of breaks. And then watch that salt water intake. Um, bring fresh water, of course, but just really watch. Don't let your dog drink that salt water. It's just not good for them. You want to be aware of water intoxication. It's rare, but... Um, for dogs who love the water, it's it's common, right? So be mindful about how much water your dog is ingesting. And here's the symptoms. In case you see this, it can be really serious. So we've got loss of coordination, lethargy, bloating, vomiting, glazed eyes, excessive salvation, difficult, difficulty breathing, and coma. Okay, so obviously you don't want that to happen. Just be aware that your dog's not ingesting too much water. Now, lakes and creeks. I don't know about um, about Austin, Texas, but in Maryland, we can't just jump into the creek. Um, the water here is filled with uh, parasites. And so we've got these, these yellow signs everywhere. And I'm sure that there's other places um, in the country that have, um, have this problem too. So just be careful. Don't assume that the water is safe everywhere you go. Um, you can call the the local parks and recreation to double check before you go somewhere. Um, but help is just not not nearby if you're at a creek or at a lake, you know, and um, for us here in Maryland, dogs are dying within minutes of entering this water. So just be really mindful of, um, of the bodies of water wherever you are. Got to be careful with the rocks, especially by the shallow waters and by the shore. Um, know where they are and avoid them because your dog can cut their paw open on these rocks and it puts them at risk for infection if it's not kept clean. Um, with Piper, we always went to Deep Creek Lake in the summer and she cut her paw open on the rocks, couldn't swim. It was kind of miserable afterwards. <laughs> so uh, be careful on those rocks, it, it does happen. An option that you have though is to have your dog wear boots um, if, you, if you want to, like dog shoes. It's not something that you just put on your dog and let your dog go run free. Like that's something you have to train your dog to get used to. So if if you go to places that have lots of shallow, shallow waters and lots of rocks and sharp things, you might want to think about that, but you don't have to. Just kind of keep an eye out, you know. 
Okay, so going for a hike, you want to build up to this physically. So you're going to start with long, long. You're going to start with short, easy hikes, and then build up to longer, more challenging ones. And it's not just length of time, but it's also how strenuous that that hike is. Um, so River and I just got back from Green Mountain, and I thought I was I was starting off. Um, with short hikes, but obviously she needed shorter hikes because she was exhausted after just like a couple days. She was like, I'm not moving anymore. So be really mindful of that hike because remember dogs will just keep going and going. They don't know when to stop and take a break. You have to, you have to be one step ahead of them. Okay. And with puppies, they're, they're still growing. So you got to be mindful of that. Um, nothing super strenuous until they're older. Okay and match, your, match the hike to your dog's endurance level. Protect from the bugs. It is tick season. Uh, you gotta be sure that your dog is up to date on that flea and tick medication. Um, get some doggy insect repellent. I love herbal, herbal armor, all-terrain herbal armor. That's the one that I use. Um, so many ticks, <laughs> so many ticks when we were at the mountain and thank goodness she was on the flea and tech medication and then adding the insect repellent on top really, really, really helped. Um, be sure to stick to those trails and avoid the tall grassy areas and wipe down your dog before getting in the car. Check for those ticks before you get into the car, even in a place where you think that it might not be. Um, when we were at the visitor center and we weren't like in the mountains or anything, I was like, oh, there's no way. And there was like a tick crawling on her face. So they're everywhere. Just, just check to make sure, okay? Especially at this time of year. Uh, if you want some hiking gear, that Sleepy Pod Terrain has um, a backpack attachment so you can have your dog carry um, like the poop bags and your phone and your keys while you're on that hike, which is really nice. Um, and I love that you can go from the car to the hike and have your dog help you carry things too. <laughs> uh, if you've got a little dog, this is kind of fun. Um, if, uh, if your dog can't walk the whole way, you can carry your dog part of the time and be spreading awareness for dog seatbelt safety at the same time because they're in a car seat. <laughs> um, a couple other things that you might want to consider. The Fido Pro airlift is right here. And this is something for if you can't carry your dog for long distances and your dog gets injured um, on the trail, how are you going to get your dog down that mountain? Um, this is something that you put your dog in and you can carry your dog down, um, carry your dog on your back. Um, and so just something to consider if that, if hiking is a big thing for you guys. And then this is the Whistle GPS Pet Tracker. And it's kind of like a Fitbit for your dog, but it has like a GPS with it. Uh, it this is really nice for, for runners. Like if you have a dog that likes to just bolt and run after things, you might, you might want to consider a GPS if you're in a place that you're really, that you're unfamiliar with. You know, um, a microchip will identify your dog after your dog is found, but a GPS will let you know where your dog is if your dog is lost. So um, know your dog, you know, like if you need one, there's, there's an idea there. All right, and then here's some final reminders. Uh, food, keep your food and packaging secure. Like obviously, you know that like dogs can't have chocolate and macadamia nuts and things like that. And you don't want your dog to get into those things, of course. But uh, if you have not heard about prevent pet suffocation, this is really important. This is a thing. Um, dogs can suffocate in food bags. Uh, the, the founder of prevent Suff pet suffocation, uh, this happened to her dog. And so now she spreads awareness for this. What happens is in when the dogs eat out of these chip bags or any food packaging bags, it creates a seal around their around their head. And you can just imagine the horror of the rest. But what you need to do is one, keep it away, keep the trash away from your dog, but cut up the bags. So like, obviously you're gonna be snacking in the car on a road trip, keep some scissors in that glove compartment, cut off the, the bottom of the bag so that your dog can't, um, can't suffocate in it, okay? Um, she, uh, we we hear stories. She puts out stories about this maybe a few times a week. So it happens. So I wanted to put that out there so you know, keep that food packaging secure, okay?
you want to set your dog up for success. So exercise your ball or exercise your dog <laughs> before you head out. You want to play ball or um, go for a really long walk for and go for a nice hike. A tired dog is a good dog. Um, you do not want to put a wound up high energy dog into a car for eight hours. So make sure you take the time to exercise your dog first. Fill that back seat with lots of good, happy things. Okay, you can use a hammock to keep all those things in place. And then keep a bunch of treats in front with you so that you can just throw the treats back there as you're, uh, well, don't drive and throw treats back there, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you can reward your dog um, as, they're, as you're um, on your road trip, okay? And just take your time. Don't rush to your destination. Uh, some of my best adventures have been detours that I've taken with my pup. So I hope you all have a nice trip with your dog this summer and have an adventure. Okay, and ride certified. Get a certified seatbelt and keep your puppy safe in the car. And that's it. Um, if you want to learn more, this is our riding certified magazine. Um, it's filled with um, things like this, uh, dog car safety and travel tips. Okay. So thank you so much for having me. And awesome. Thank you yeah. so much for being here. Does anybody have final questions for, for Pete? I know we covered a lot of topics today, yeah. so this will definitely be a good one. I will make sure that I send the link out uh, tomorrow for the recording. So if anybody has questions, feel free to, um, to ask them and I'll make sure that Peace Contact information gets out there as well. Um, oh, is there contact information or ways to support Piper's Walk? What a great question, Allison. Yeah, um, my contact information is right whoops right here um here's our website dogsridesurvey.com and um miranda has this too so yeah send this stuff out um and for piper's walk um our event is on june 26 so it's just in a few weeks and all the info is at the the website if you're interested awesome well thank you so much i really appreciate it we will be sending this far and wide if y'all know anybody who would like to learn more about dog safety in car and car trips, summer trips, um, please feel free to send them the link once we send it out. So thank you so much again for being here. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys soon. Okay, bye.